God. And it was very, very difficult in the beginning. But over the last four weeks, I have come to terms with things because I know that I am not... Nobody can oppress me. Oppression is in the mind. But I am very, very sad for those that have de been deprived of, of my presence. Those that love me. My son, my mother, my siblings. My father who is dying. Um, he needs an operation. The chances of his survival this week are very small. Everybody is with him except me. Um, and the children in the home who have only got me, I am their only constant. I'm sad for them. But I know that I have done my best and I will continue to do my best. And I'm no longer afraid of anything or anyone, not even of death, because whether I live or die makes no difference. What makes, what is important is that somebody continues my work when I'm gone. All our don donors have dried up because the scorpions told them all that I have misappropriated their funds. So I can get no donations from our prior donors. I can get no donations from South Africa because they all believe that I have misappropriated funds. This is completely untrue. If it wasn't for the donations that I receive from private individuals here in the United Kingdom, five pounds here and five pounds there, or, or 20 pounds now and again, or for, um, people sponsoring the children here in the UK for £30 a month or whatever they can afford, the children would actually starve. First of all, I need money to keep that home going. We need £6,500 a month. That is to cover the, the food for the children, their medication, their doctor's bills, their school uniforms, their clothing, their shoes, their school fees, all their school books, the psychiatrists, their psychiatric medication, their counselling fees. Um, this is also to pay for their extramural sports. It's to pay for the um, martial arts that they go to. I send them to martial arts so that they are able to protect themselves in this incredibly high crime area so that they don't have to be raped and sodomized anymore, so that they can run away, so that they can defend themselves. So I pay for them to go twice a week to martial arts. This is to pay for 14 qualified staff members 24 hours a day I have to have staff looking after them I've got babies there it's to pay for disposable nappies it's to pay for disposable gloves it's to pay for water and electricity it's to pay for insurances it's to pay for taxes, it's to pay for maintenance, it's to pay for our transport, it's to pay for the taxis so that our staff can get to work. It's, it's a never-ending supply and if you think that I'm, I'm taking care of 45 children um, and I'm paying for all this I'm feeding them um, 
as well three really good meals a day. I'm also providing them with sandwiches and fruit for their school day. They are also getting milk and sandwiches at 9 p.m. at night during their uh, break in their study times because they have to study the, the bigger children until 10 p.m. I cannot do it for less and if you think about it how many salaries in the UK is that? Six and a half thousand pounds. Apart from which I also feed the street children. I also take care of anybody who comes to the door who is hungry. And then of course you've got your what you would put under your admin list, you know, you've got your telephones. I've got to, I've got to run three computers just for the children's uh, uh, homework. I also have to employ two extra teachers to keep, to to make sure that these children uh, are able to cope with with schooling, because many of the children have never been to school before they come to me. Um, you know, if you start adding all this together, I'm stretching that money to the nth degree. And, and that's why I work so hard to make sure that I'm getting also material donations. You know, all the teenagers have got to have deodorant. Um, they complain because they've got pimples on their face. I've got to make sure that they've got stuff for their pimples. You know, 14 of our children are menstruating. I've got to make sure that they've got sanitary towels. When you've got a list like this, these are all the hidden costs that people forget about. Why should my children go without or have less than just because they are in Africa? No. My children must have. Yes, they do have only two pairs of shoes. And they don't have mobile phones. And they don't have lots of toys. But I love them and I make sure they've got the best that I can give them on the six and a half thousand pounds.